Hello. Welcome to mini lecture 5.2, where we're going to discuss agonists and antagonists. Psychopharmacology is the study of how chemicals change the nervous system and change our behavior. Now, a drug is any chemical substance that has its desired effect. A psychoactive drug or a psychoactive medication is a drug that changes our moods, our thoughts, um, our anxiety, our set of relaxation. It can be used to manage neuropsychological illnesses. And they're also used by animals. Psychoactive drugs are not specific to humans. If you've ever watched a cat enjoy catnip, that cat is enjoying a psychoactive drug. Uh, at least in California, at uh, certain times of the year, there's a plant called pyracantha that produces a little berry. And uh, some birds wait until that little berry is fermented and then they just go crazy for um, those little berries, which have a psychoactive effect. One of the things you need to keep in mind is that the effect of a drug, any drug, depends on how it's administered. You could take a pill, um, you could inhale something, you could inject something. Every delivery technique has a different timeline and a different efficacy that goes with it. So for example, if you take a pill, pills you, you ingest orally uh, uh, a psychoactive medication, the effect is not going to occur right away. It's going to be delayed for a bit, and it's not going to be as strong as an effect as if you took that same drug and injected it or inhaled it. Uh, injections, for example, um, cause uh, faster um, uh, onset of the change, and also larger. So some people, for example, get addicted to a particular drug in pill form. And as you'll see in a minute, eventually, if you get, uh, if you, your body adapts to the drugs that you take, whether it's heroin or caffeine. Um, and as a result of that, you need more of the same drug in order to get the same effect. Um, and as a reason, in order to get more of an effect, some people will switch, for example, from taking a pill to um, delivery of that same drug by injection. Now, I said that drugs work, psychoactive drugs work by changing neurotransmitters. And there's two big ways that they do that. Um, we already talked about neurotransmitters floating around in the synaptic gap and then falling into a receptor that's appropriately shaped. And you see that in the graph here on the far left. Uh, before any drug's been taken, the neurotransmitter this time is, is symbolized as that green pill. It's floating around and it finds a hole on the receptor neuron that it fits right into. That's normally how information is transmitted uh, across a, a synaptic gap. Um, but that can be the impact of a neurotransmitter can be increased or decreased. And we call drugs that increase the impact of uh, the communicative properties of a particular neurotransmitter. We call those agonists. And the, the drugs that decrease activity, we call those antagonists. So agonists basically bind to the receptor on a neuron and just stimulate it and stimulate it and stimulate it and hang in there for a long time. So there's lots and lots of stimulation and uh, the neuron doesn't know whether it's being stimulated by the regular neurotransmitter or by the drug. It just knows it's being stimulated. Antagonists, on the other hand, plug the baseball mitt or the hole or the receptor on the receiving neurons so that nothing can stimulate it, right? So as far as that neuron knows, there's no of the normally stimulating neurotransmitter um, falling into the receptor. Um, the neuron doesn't know. It's because there's an antagonist that's blocking the ability of the neurotransmitter to do its job. So agonist and antagonist. And here's, I'm going to use a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine to give you some examples of agonist and antagonist. So acetylcholine is a common neurotransmitter. It's used in a number of different activities. 
uh, when students are learning and trying to remember things, acetylcholine plays an important role. It also plays an important role in muscle contraction. Acetylcholine agonists, remember agonists increase, acetylcholine agonists um, are included in nicotine and also in the venom of the black widow spider. And those two chemicals, the venom and the nicotine, both because they're agonists cause an increase in muscle tone. Now with nicotine, it's that feeling that you're, you know, you're energized, you're ready to go. With the black widow spider, there's so much agonist given that um, the muscles can't function anymore. Uh, now, acetylcholine also has an antag antagonist drugs that go along with it, and those include Botox. Now, you've heard of Botox, people who want to get rid of, rid, of the, rid of the wrinkles in their face sometimes get Botox injections. Botox is actually a poison, and um, it is an antagonist, so it's going to decrease the activity of acetylcholine. So it's going to be very difficult for muscles that have been injected with Botox to tense up. So why do people take Botox? Well, like I have a big wrinkle in between my eye. If I, my eyes, if I injected Botox here, the muscles around my eyes would relax and that wrinkle would go away, right? Not only would they relax, I wouldn't be able to tense it up. Um, curare is a venom that uh, indigenous peoples used on um, the arrows, on the, not the arrows, the um, arrowhead of an arrow, on the tips of the arrows. So when they shot their prey, it would paralyze them temporarily so they could get them. So antagonists decrease muscle tone, acetylcholine antagonists. Acetylcholine agonists increase it. Dopamine is another major, major neurotransmitter in the central nervous system, and it's involved in all sorts of things, everything from mood and thought and arousal to your ability to move. Um, you may have heard of a disease called Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease occurs when the part of your brain that normally produces dopamine can no longer produce enough. Uh, the medication that's given to people with Parkinson's disease is called L-DOPA, uh, and it's a, a, a drug, it's like the precursor to dopamine. Um, it, it helps the brain produce more dopamine so that someone with Parkinson's disease can move their limbs more smoothly again. So Parkinson's disease is too little dopamine people think that schizophrenia is caused by too much dopamine. Again, these are controversial, but that's uh, the premise of a lot of current treatments is that schizophrenia, which um, is a kind of, it's a kind of psychosis in which there's a, can be a break between you and reality so that what you see or hear or think is not connected to the outside world as it is uh, in typical people. So people with schizophrenia can have hallucinations or delusions, false beliefs. Um, treatments for schizophrenia involve blocking dopamine receptors to decrease the, the amount of dopamine stimulation that it happens in the nervous system. Uh, amphetamines and cocaine are two psychoactive drugs that we'll talk about um, in, an, in the next couple mini lectures. They are agonists, they increase dopamine's effects, and both amphetamines and cocaine, if they're taken for a long period of time, can start giving rise to uh, psychosis. The precursor, the, uh, the psychosis, so um, uh, problems with seeing or hearing things that aren't there. Okay, that's all I'm going to tell you about agonists and antagonists. In lecture three, uh, 5.3, we will talk about principles of psychopharmacology. So come right back.